I see a star here, okay, and I recognize that star. I just know that particular star in the sky, in the sky is star A. I'm just going to give it a name, star A. Okay, and let's also suppose that right now our t the time is 6 p.m., okay? Now, if somebody out there is watching this video and actually knows how to celestial uh, navigate, uh, clearly I'm going to be oversimplifying, but I think for the most everybody, you'll get the, the basics of what I'm talking about, and that's the whole purpose of the video. All right, so here I am. I'm out in the middle of the ocean. I see star A. Okay, I recognize. I know it's star A, and it's 6 p.m. Now, from my location, okay, I see star A, let's say, at 50 degrees, 50 degrees above the horizon. Now, how would I get that measurement? Okay, so the way I would get that measurement is using a nautical instrument. You've probably seen it. I'm going to try to sketch it real quick. It's called a sextant. Okay, it looks like this. You've probably seen mariners using it. And what they do, they pick this thing up, they look through it, and then they kind of swing something back and forth, and it's able to tell them the angle of an object above the horizon. And really do have to be very specific uh, with these measurements. Okay, So anyways, I take my section out. I know it's 6 p.m., and I look at star A, and I'm seeing at 50 degrees above the horizon at 6 p.m. on this particular day. All right. So what does this mean? Okay, if I have those two pieces of information, I, I'm on my way to finding my position at, at sea. Well, there is a book that navigators use, okay, and, um, oh boy, if I'm not mistaken, I think the book is called like HO229. It's kind of a weird name for a book. It's been a, it's been a long time. But anyways, it's essentially a reference of all these stars that we look at, these primary stars that we use for navigation. And I go to this book, and I'm saying, okay, it's 6 p.m., and I'm looking at star A. And the book will tell me, well, star A should be located at this position, okay, at 6 p.m. Okay, at 6 p.m., you should be seeing side, uh, star A directly over your head, 90 degrees, right? So if I'm standing out here in the middle of the ocean at this position, okay, not where I'm at, Okay, at this particular position, I would see star A directly above my head at 90 degrees. Okay, so if uh, let's suppose a star A just fell straight down onto the onto the Earth, it would be at this position at 6 p.m. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you, right? So um, if I'm right here and I'm looking at star A, I would be looking straight straight up, right above my head, up in the sky. But obviously, at 6 p.m., I'm looking at star A and I see it at 50 degrees in the sky, not 90 degrees, not above my head. So with those two pieces of information, okay, I can use some trigonometry. Okay, this is going to be a right angle. I have a degree here. I have a location here. And I'm not going to get into the math because it's just that's not the purpose of this video. But essentially, what you're able to do, what the book is able to do, is to say, listen, if you're seeing star A at 50 degrees, okay, and not at 90 degrees, well, the only way you can do that is that you have to be a certain distance away from its location at 6 p.m., okay? And it's basically going to build us a little circle here. So let's use, let's just make a number up. Let's say in order to see star A at 50 degrees, okay, at 6 p.m. at night, you have to be a 900 miles away to be able to see that observation, 